Well, I think as we get more treatments, the question is what's the role of each treatment and how do you decide which treatment to use? Um, the fact that there were patients who were quote unquote not taking medicine before, whether tr truly naive or had been off medicine for a while, suggests that there is a potential for this treatment to be a first line treatment. Um, and I think understanding that will be important and again the longer term efficacy rates will be important um, but there looks to be a very good effect of this so I think there's a lot of reasons to be hopeful about it I mean obviously it needs to go through regulatory and be approved it's not approved yet um, but um, so I think that's the major aspect of this the other part of this is that the small number of patients, about 10% of patients, have antibodies to nodal and paranodal um, constituents, Neurofastin 155, Contactin 1, Casper 1. Many of these are IgG4 antibodies that don't respond to um, IVIG, don't respond to complement inhibition, but the FCRN inhibitors do reduce these IgG4 antibodies, so it may have a more global response rate in CIDP than, say, IVIG does. If and when it gets approved, I think it's something to consider. I think you need to have important conversations with your patient in terms of what to effect, expect. The response, the IgG lowering was relatively quick in this disease, which is helpful. So it may be, um, and the clinical effect seems to be relatively quick as well. So if patients who have aggressive disease, this may be a treatment that would be useful for them as opposed to some that take longer to respond to. Um, I think it's making sure that you have very important conversations with your patients, what to expect, what's the short-term potential benefit, what's the long-term benefit. Um, but I think it's going to be an exciting addition to the um, armamentarian of the treatment of this disease.